Organic synthesis are usually long, complex and filled with unexpected challenges. In this new series, I'll be trying something new that has never really been done on YouTube before. Synthesizing vanillin from pretty much scratch. Yes, vanillin, the compound behind vanilla flavor. If you look at the structure of our starting chemical, which is toluene, and vanillin, you can see that they share the same benzene ring, but getting from one to the other takes several other informations, which is why I'm breaking this down in multiple episodes. In this first video, I'll show you the full synthesis plan and walk you through step 1 which is making something called paratoluene sulfonic acid, or PTSA for short. First, let's take a look at the plan. I actually didn't make it myself and found it on the Science Madness forums, which is where I first heard of this synthesis idea. We start from toluene, which is often sold as paint stripper in stores. The first step is very well known because it makes paratoluene sulfonic acid, which is a useful reagent in organic synthesis. In the second step, we remove the sulfonate group, which was just an intermediate to make what is called paracrystal. This reaction is not on YouTube, so I will instead follow the procedures of fellow Cyan Madness users, which have done this reaction already. It's a little bit less straightforward, but it's still fine in theory. And then we get to the difficult parts, which are the last three steps. In the third step, we're gonna try to oxidize the methyl group on the paracrystal, following a paper from 1994. This time we will need less common reagents, because the solvent is methanol, which thankfully I have, but then we need cobalt chloride as a catalyst, and oxygen as another reagent. For oxygen, I can just use the air, so it's fine, but I don't have some good cobalt chloride available. So we'll have to make it from, well, um, batteries. <laughs> I, don't, I know it's not elegant, but it should work in theory. So let's say we have a product, which is parahydroxybenzaldehyde. The fourth step is just a simple bromination, but I also don't have bromine at the moment. So I will have to make some. I have some BCDMH to make it, but the problem is that the bromine made from BCDMH is not pure and it's contaminated with chlorine, and I, I don't know if it's fine or not. Anyway, when we have a bromine, we can do the bromination and the last step following a procedure made for students. The bromination is supposed to last about 30 seconds for some reason. and then quickly go to the last step. And the last step needs three chemicals that I don't have at the moment. Sodium methoxide, which is the reagent, copper bromide as a catalyst, and ethyl acetate as a solvent. So my main questions are, can I use another solvent if possible? Can I use copper chloride instead, because it would be easier to make, of course? And how do I make the sodium methoxide? I have no two such doors yet, because we're not there already, you know, but if you have some ideas, I'll be happy to hear them in the comments. Anyway, those two last steps together are said to make about 50 mg of solid vanillin from 100 mg of parahydroxybenzaldehyde, which is a decent yield, but it's not huge. Which is why we will need to start at a somewhat medium to big scale if possible. Another problem of the last step is that the procedure uses a flash chromatography to purify the vanillin, which I don't have. So should I buy a column? just for that, and also the silicate gel, or is there another way, perhaps? Anyway, there was a lot of explaining, so let's just chill and start the first step now. We only need two reagents for this reaction, toluene and concentrated sulfuric acid. As always, be careful when handling chemicals, and especially concentrated sulfuric acid. We first start by measuring a whole 200 ml of toluene that we pour in the 500 ml round bottom flask. Mm. Yes. Then we measure 70 ml of 98% sulfuric acid and pour it as well, but slowly, of course, so that it doesn't heat up. As you can see the mix turns somewhat cloudy and slightly yellow, but that's because the toluene is not pure and the sulfuric acid is reacting with the impurities. Here I mounted a special setup which is supposed to mimic what is called a Dean Stark apparatus. 
It's a little complicated, but basically our reaction will produce water as a side product. This water will boil with the toy and get condensed and drip in the flask at the end. So they will form two different layers because, the, because they're not soluble, like oil and water. And what we want is to get our toluene back in the reaction flask, but to not get the water back, so it's a little bit tricky. The way it works is that there is a tube connecting back to the reaction flask that will act as a siphon. And if we put it at the right height, we should only collect the toluene, and it will be recycled over and over. But the water will be removed gradually and get stuck in the receiver. At least that's the theory. I first tried with my usual tubing, but when I filled it with the toluene to make a siphon, it started to dissolve the tube, so I had to stop and change tube. Oh fuck. Well, I had not seen this coming. Apparently my tubing gets absolutely destroyed. I found this other weird one, that is from an old shower, I believe. It resisted to the toluene, so that was a good sign. Sadly, it was too big and difficult to bend correctly, so I never ended up making this whole thing work. If you want the tutorial, I just follow Node2H video once again. Anyway, I had this video to make anyway, so I decided fuck it, I will transform myself into a fucking siphon, and so for the next 3 hours, I have manually retrieved the toluene to the reaction flask, using this uh, thing, whatever, and leaving the water behind. As you can see, the clear water layer is the bottom, and the cloudy toluene, because of the water is inside it. As you can see, over time, the mixture gradually turned more yellow, orange, then red, and then dark over time. So now that I've done all this by hand, I can tell you that it's not worth it because I learned there is supposedly just a normal reflux also works decently well for the reaction. Alright, so I let the flask cool down. And as you can see, it has become quite a, a mush. It's not exactly solid, but it's not liquid either. So we're just gonna filter this. So then I filter this thing that looked like some light tar. And this light tar is very weird though because it untarred itself over time by some random magic. That was very surprising to me because most of the time tar just makes more tar and doesn't make cool crystals, but okay, sure. <laughs> In the end, the filtration was not going so well, but we have quite a bit of tar or product crystallized, so I decided to remove the filter paper that was decomposing and put everything together. Well, at first I wanted to filter, you know, but this is how it looked in the end. So the white stuff prob is probably our product and there is also some weird fuck contamination, the toluene, etc. And same thing here, we s still have both the product and the contamination. So what I think I'm gonna do is um, dissolve all of this in water. And what doesn't dissolve is not a product, basically. And so this way, hopefully we can purify by a recrystallization. <laughs> Yeah. Alright, so I'm gonna add by washing quickly the round bottom flask with some water. Yeah, exactly. So most of it should dissolve because it is a product. When I shake the flask with some water, the supposed product dissolves very fast. So that's a very good sign because real tar is not soluble at all in water, and paratoluene sulfonic acid is very soluble, so that's good. I put everything on the hot plate to stir and dissolve everything nicely. Alright, so now we're gonna decant that top layer which is the toluene. I decanted the leftover toluene and filtered the water layer containing our product to get rid of the insoluble impurities, which is probably the tar, the real tar. As you can see there is a lot of junk on the top. 
and even though the, the bottom solution is dark, at least it's somewhat clearer. Don't have so much of the junk. Then I boil down the dark solution to recrystallize the paratol and sulfonic acid. Alright, so we're still boiling down the solution, and we should boil it down until at least 150 milliliters. I'm gonna aim between um, 100 and 150, about 125, something like this. Just eyeball it, you know. Alright, so as you can see, after boiling down, we got some nice solid, but there's still a little bit of liquid, so we're gonna be able to filter that very well. And we are at um, more or less what I said, like we probably at like 135, something like this, milliliters, which is good. All right, so now we're gonna activate the pump, and so you're not gonna hear me at all. As per usual, I set up my shitty vacuum filtration setup. It consists of a strong vacuum cleaner, which is still a weak vacuum, but whatever, a funnel with a plastic grid, which I made by melting some plastic, so it acts like a professional setup, but just everything worse. As you can see, it still sucks the water nicely and leaves us with some good looking crystals, even though they are a little bit dark. So that was step 1 of this ambitious synthesis. We have made paratoluene sulfonic acid despite some issues with the siphon setup, or whatever. Next episode, I'll neutralize the PTSA and convert it to paracrystal using molten potassium hydroxide, a pretty intense reaction. If you've got some suggestions for the later steps, drop a comment below. Subscribe if you want to see this cool synthesis come to life. Thanks for watching and have a great summer.